Hi there, it's Rob again. Welcome to the last of our Vectorworks Spotlight Basics tutorials. Today we're going to deal with lighting data and printing, so uh, some ways of extracting data from your plot and uh, displaying it, and also just finally printing your plan so you can uh, take it on site. I'm going to fire up my Vectorworks, and if you remember last time we drew a very simple theatre and a very simple lighting plot with a few fixtures on, um, and I set you guys off to go and have a bit of a play and see what you could come up with adding symbols and adding attributes to them. So I've added a few more symbols to mine, um, and there's a few other bits of pieces of data which are still yet to be added. So the first thing I want to do is, before we go on to the lighting data, um, I'm going to just remind you of why we set up everything in layers and classes, particularly classes in this instance. Um, say we have everything here is on our class, our, our venue class is blue, and our set and scenery class is red, and our lighting and, and rigging uh, is set to black. Now, obviously you looked last time at how I could turn off our set class so we couldn't see the stuff on stage or so that you know I could turn off even the venue class so you couldn't see the venue so that's kind of useful uh, while you're drawing things but um, say you decided you wanted to uh, draw everything in uh, black and white and then you wanted to go back later and add some color to your lines um, or some different uh, line types or something one of the good things about classes is that if you set class up properly and you set your class to use the attributes that you've set uh, at creation, um, having drawn all these things, for instance these two set elements here, it's not too difficult to go back and go back into uh, into our editor and so if you click on this, but next to the classes uh, navigation here there's a little sort of stack here of things and we basically can go back into the organization editor and if we click on classes which is the first button you can actually double click on the color of set for example and we could change the color to something else entirely so I'm going to change to a magenta color and then I'm going to change my line to a, a dashed line and then I'm going to go OK and you can see already um, it's set, changed the whole class uh, whether that be whatever that be on any layer every class has then turned uh, to a magenta with a with a dashed line so you can see how that will be quite a good way of uh, making whole scale changes to the look of your document as well as being useful for navigation and organization of your uh, drawing while you're working on it. Okay, so last time if you remember we used the label legend manager to set up these little uh, legends along here with the color and purpose and various other things. Um, today I'm just going to remind you where that information is and we're going to look at other ways of changing it. So. Last time we changed the information in the object info browser, didn't we? So we had a color, Lee117, and we had a purpose, a cool cover, and we changed them either on an individual lantern basis or on a group basis uh, via the object info browser. Now that's kind of okay, but it could be quite a long-winded way of doing things. So the other way that LDs quite often like to work is to work in a spreadsheet format. So they quite often like to uh, make changes to things in a, in a more of a Excel kind of format than changing things on a plan. So what I'm going to do now, is we, what we need to do is we need to create a report so that we're able to edit elements of that report and have them reflected in the plan. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Tools, Reports, and create report. Now I'm going to call this uh, report all LX data. Oops, don't need to be capitalized. And you can see on the right hand side is all of the columns that are going to be in my worksheet. And all on the left hand side is going to be the columns that I could use. If you look down the list there, you'll see that none of them are actually relating to lighting. And that's because what we need to do is we need to go to listing objects with record and we need to change that to lighting device. So we change it to lighting device, and you can see now it's got all the things that we've know and love on our uh, on our document. Now I'm going to use some of. I'm going to basically export all of these across. If you want to take them all away, you remove all, and then you add individual ones. Or I'm just going to add them all because this is going to be for the whole thing. I don't want to summarise items of the same device type, so I'm just going to go OK. My Vectorworks is hanging a bit. That's a bit worrying, isn't it? Okay, so what it's going to do, hopefully that will fire up in a minute, what it's going to do is it's going to create me a spreadsheet, basically, which I can then make changes to. I could export, I could manipulate the data, I could actually um, display that data on another sheet or on the plan. So what I'm going to do now is I just want to add in some an extra piece of colour. There's three source for juniors here that don't have any colour. So I'm just going to add colour to this one. So Lee103, 
of course, you guessed it, 117, 103 and 136 combination. And I'm just going to copy and paste that data into the other two as well. So hopefully then, once we've closed this off, you can go back and you see on the drawing that that data has been entered into the drawing. Now if I want to open that up again, what I need to do is I need to go to Window, make sure we're on the document that I want to work on, Worksheets, All LX Data, and it opens up again. Now you can see there, there's lots of information, there's lots of all kinds of information that I haven't even filled in, um, and obviously I could have generated a report with only one or two columns. But uh, that that's gives you an idea of how you can access and change the data with the, within Vectorworks related to your lighting equipment. Um, you could also export it uh, or copy it into your own spreadsheet program. Um, but you can also use Vectorworks to automatically generate some paperwork for you. So let's have a quick look at that. So say I've got my plan all together, I've got everything finished up, all of the things are circuited and numbered and everything's all great. What we're going to do now is going to pop to... Uh, reports and generate paperwork and then we're going to select what we want to do so we're going to select um, all of the all of the schedules here don't forget I haven't got all of my information necessarily and I'm going to have a color cut list and a inventory I'm going to say show designer Rob Sayer show name demo show and the date today, let's click that in there. So now I'm going to get Vectorworks to do all that. It's going to give me some, uh, ask me a question as to how many I've got of these things. So let's say for Junior Zoom, say let's say we've got 10 of them just for the hell of it. And for the claim for now, we've also got 10. What that does is it tells Vectorworks uh, how much we actually own of these things so that it can then work out how many we've got left and stuff. So, so that's create those, but we can't see them. Where they've actually appeared is in all of in, in the worksheets file. So if you wanted to look up a colour cut list, you could you see you can open up that and that creates a table of colour cuts uh, broken down by position as I asked it to. You can obviously manipulate that data and, and copy it into other places. Um, the thing about Vectorworks is that actually when it comes to really good manipulation of data, I find it's much easier to use um, another s uh, way of doing it via, via um, exporting data to a spreadsheet program like Excel, or even better is to use uh, John McKenna's Lightwrite, uh, which was on five or Lightwrite five we're on at the moment, um, which natively kind of uh, exchanges data with Vectorworks and deals with a lot of the things that you might do as a lighting designer uh, in in a more kind of coherent manner. So so you can use Vectorworks to create uh, tables and worksheets and stuff which you can then uh, display on your document if you want to or, or display on another page or print out. Um, but if you really really want to get into the real nitty gritty of doing LD's paperwork and data management um, I would tend to look at something like Lightwrite. So well, one thing we want to do for our drawing before we can give it to our crew is we'll want to create an instrument key, wouldn't we? So uh, they would know what particular symbols relate to what fixtures and also possibly how our uh, label legend works out. And that's another thing that Vectorworks will do reasonably easily. It will, uh, you can go to Tools again and Reports again and Key to Instrumentation. It asks us what we want to uh, add to our key to instrumentation and then the next time we click it's going to insert it in the document. OK, so you can see there, it's added a little key which we can just move around like that. It's given us source for junior zoom, number inventory 10, uses used 6, remaining 4. So that just gives a little key for our document. Now the final thing I want to do in the last of these tutorials is to just talk a little bit about um, printing. Now, remember at the start of the tutorials I said to you that it was probably a good idea if you decided you were going to print stuff, you should probably start off by creating your design layer in the size you wanted to print at the scale you wanted it to print at. That's because there's a quite a complex and powerful system for printing different documents based on one drawing in Vectorworks. Um, but for the moment, if you imagine that we want to just print this out for our crew, um, what we're going to do is have a look at page setup again. If you remember, we had it set to A3. Let's just try and find A3 on this list. That's exciting, it's not on here. Okay. Two size and available in printer. A3. 
And what I want to do now is I'm just going to go to print and I'm going to preview. And that gives me a preview of uh, how, I, how I print it out in, um, in that format. Now, if you're going to just print this sheet, you could print it out like that. Um, that would be fine, you know, for handing out and stuff like that. The thing that you want to do, if you are kind of get really keen on getting into Vectorworks, the thing you would want to look at is there's two two parts of the printing uh, workflow in uh, Vectorworks. There's viewports, which basically show you a, a different part of your drawing, especially in 3D. You can imagine it shows you a, an elevation view or a front view or a, a section of some kind. Um, and and sheet layers, which is, gives you um, different sheets, different worksheets, basically, that you can uh, print out different formats and different scales and stuff like that. So if you want to really get into Vectorworks and use it to its full capacity, um, I suggest that you might want to look up uh, viewports and sheet layers. But for the moment, it's just enough that we know that we can print it out, print a document out at the, at the same uh, size and scale that we originally drew it in. Um, that's pretty much it for this uh, series. The other thing you might want to look into is uh, there's a lot of tools of Vectorworks and very good lighting designer tools uh, and things that are sort of hidden away in the depths of menus somewhere. If you're really, really interested in things like that, you might find yourself looking into things such as uh, focus points and stuff like that. Now, now, what we've gone through in these tutorials is literally just to get you up and running and to be able to create a reasonably straightforward plan uh, that you could use. Um, the main places to look, obviously, for additional stuff is uh, in, the, uh, in the Spotlights tool set. Again, the Modify panel, there's lots of things in the Modify panel you will want to experiment with, and you might want to move on to working into, in 3D. So what we've done so far is worked in Top Plan, and we've worked in 2D. And you'll find then when you start working in 3D that the idea of setting a Z height for your layers, your design layers, um, that, that makes a lot more sense when you work in 3D. So there's lots to learn in Vectorworks, and I'm, I'm sure you will, uh, you'll find it as interesting as some people do. Um, but for the moment, we'll just uh, say thanks a lot for listening, and I'll see you again soon.